So much for joining me for a story today. My name is Vicky from the Listen in Storytelling and today I'm lucky enough to be at Celtic Harmony in Brickenden in Hertfordshire which is an incredible reconstructed Iron Age settlement and you can see a couple of the roundhouses just there behind me and this is really a place that brings the past to life using creativity and skills and craft to transport visitors way back into history. I'm off to the Chieftain's Roundhouse, where I have a story just for you. It's a story of flying horses, of magic words, of magic herbs, that takes us right back in time to ancient Ireland, to a time when Shehogs fairies would weave magic and mischief throughout the land. <laughs> and so, from here in Celtic Harmony in Hertfordshire, I bring you Celtic tale Gulish. I'll meet you by the fire. One November night, Gulish, at his home in Ireland, gazed up at the moon. It was a silent, still night, and the moonshine gently lit the nearby Rath, or Ring Fort, making it look almost magical. There wasn't a puff of wind, or the hoot of an owl, or the scurrying of a mouse that could be heard. And Gulish sighed a long sigh. How he wished for an adventure. Well, do you know what? An adventure he was about to have. Because suddenly through the trees, Gulish heard the sound of a few whispers, which grew to the sound of many giggles, which grew to a hurly-burly of chattering, clattering voices, which swept and whirled past Gulish, ruffling his hair and rustling all the trees nearby. What was that? It was a whirlwind of little people, mischievous and with their eyes a twinkle. Adventure-seeking Gulish couldn't help but follow them as they all clattered into the rat. Fascinated, he watched as each of them started chanting, my horse, my bridle and saddle. 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 Gulish joined in with this mesmerizing chant. My horse, my bridle, my saddle. My horse, my bridle, my saddle. My horse, my bridle, my saddle. My horse, my bridle and saddle. And suddenly, he too was on a horse, a fine horse, with a bridle of gold and a saddle of silver. And each of the little people, too, were on a horse. Unbeknown to Galish, these little people were the she-hogs, fairy folk, with the spirit and mischief of imps and elves, and the power of many a magician. And Galish had started a journey he could never go back on. Come along, came a shout, and now they were all riding their magic horses together. Faster than the wind, swifter than sound, all the way to the sea. When, with the cry of, Hi, Overcap! And with Galicia's heart thumping, those horses carried them flying over the sea. And they came down the other side with a thump and roll and clatter of hooves. They had gone over the sea to France. see, the Shehogs were on a mission. They had a job to do. In France, the king's daughter, Isabel, was to be married, but the Shehogs wanted her for themselves instead. They planned to spirit her away, and they needed Gulish, who was mortal and not fairy folk, to help them do it. Gulish was to take her away on his horse. Gulish heard a magic word uttered, and suddenly they were all in the royal palace where the wedding was to take place. 
There was another magic word uttered, and suddenly all the she hogs and himself were invisible, so that nobody in the palace could see them. With his heart thumping, Gleesh looked round at the lavish, luxurious, sumptuous wedding feast that lay before them. Oh, the joyous celebration! Oh, the feast and, and the food and the meat and the music and the, the dancing and the prancing and the wine and the finery and the candles blazing as bright as sunshine bouncing off bronze. Such a celebration had never been seen. And yet, in the eyes of Isabel, the king's daughter resplendent in her wedding dress, Gulish could see that there were tears. He found out that she didn't want to marry the person who had been chosen for her. She had begged her father to delay the wedding, and he had, but it was to be delayed no longer. Everything was ready, and she was to be married. Well, Galish felt sad when he heard about that, and now he knew exactly what was expected of him by the she -Hogs. And maybe it was good that she was being taken away from a marriage that she didn't want to have. But then, surely, she was going to have to go and live with the she hogs against her will. Galish suddenly felt heavy of heart and fraught of thought. He knew not what to do. He watched as step after slow step, she walked down the aisle and the, all the guests held their very breath with rapture. And then, in what seemed like a heartbeat, one of the she hogs and remember, they were all invisible, one of them tripped her up and threw something upon her from his hands and uttered a magic word and suddenly she, Isabel, was invisible, as invisible as the she hogs as invisible as the wind, as invisible as a whisper. Oh, what a kerfuffle and commotion, panic and pandemonium, concern and confusion broke out among the wedding guests and family. Where had she gone? Where was she? In modern times, in French, où es tu, Isabelle, would be said. Isabelle, où es tu, Isabelle, Isabelle! But Isabelle was gone. My horse, my bridle and saddle. My horse, my bridle and saddle. My horse, my bridle and saddle. My horse, my bridle and saddle, cried the she hogs and in no time, she was charging across the land on the back of Galicia's horse. The she hogs had said it had to be Galicia's horse, because being mortal and not fairy folk, he was the only one to keep her safe. And they wanted to keep her safe. They wanted to keep her. High over cap, over the sea they flew. And back to the ground in Ireland with a thump and roll and clatter of hooves, all the way to Galicia's house in the north. When they got there, Galicia leapt off the horse with Isabel. All the horses turned back into whatever they had been magicked from. And the she hogs could now not take Isabel away any further or use their power to claim her as theirs. The she hogs all turned their eyes on Galish. They halted their chatter and merriment and began to hiss and spit like geese do if you get too close. Their eyes still sparkled, but now not with amusement, but with anger. They felt betrayed, wronged, cheated. This was not the plan. They felt Galish had stolen her away from them. After muttering between themselves about her power of speech, one of them came up to Isabel, who knew not where she was or which way to turn. And he clapped his hands just once. Then, with a blunt goodbye, the she hogs were gone. Gilish frowned after them. He knew enough about she hogs to know that that clap of hands had done something or meant something, but he didn't know what. What had they done? He turned to Isabel to explain that he wasn't one of them. He was just a normal person learning to be a farmer and that he was sorry that she'd been taken away from her family 
but he was glad that she hadn't had to marry someone she didn't want to and that somehow he could help her get home if she wanted but he stopped the look on her face told him that she had many many things she wanted to say as well and she was trying to form words but no words came now Gulish knew what that clap of the hands had meant it had taken away Isabel's speech. Well, Gulish was also rendered speechless, not by the Shehogs, but by his own sense of shock and of injustice and unfairness. None of this was her fault. In fact, he knew that he had had a part to play in this sad happening, and he vowed then and there to make it better. And Isabel? Well, she was strong, and despite the turmoil in her mind, she stayed strong. Gulish took her to his grandmother's house, reassuring her all the way and seeking to know that she understood where they were going and why. Grandmother listened carefully to all that had happened and of course she was happy to have Isabel to stay while Gulish tried to make amends. The first thing he did was write lots of letters to the King of France to tell him of his daughter's whereabouts with no idea whether they would arrive, but he felt he had to do something. And then of course, he was visiting his grandmother's house every day to spend time with Isabel and to check she was all right. And she was all right. She was resourceful, strong, clever, and determined to stay positive and to try to communicate as best she could. And so with gestures and expressions and signs and signals, Gilish and Isabel got to know each other very well and they understood each other. The whole year rolled past. Galish and Isabel became good friends, and good friends they became. But Galish was still heavy of heart, knowing that she didn't deserve to have her voice so cruelly taken away. He looked up at the moon again one November night, and realised it was exactly a year to the day since the Shehogs first came to the Wrath. Maybe they would come again tonight. Galish watched and waited all the rest of that day into the night, listening for a whisper, a rustle of leaves, the feel of a growing breeze. And after a long time, sure enough, through the trees, Galish heard the sound of a few whispers, which grew to the sound of many giggles, which grew to a hurly-burly of clattering, chattering voices, which swept and whirled past Galish, ruffling his hair and rustling all the trees nearby. Gilish followed the Shehogs into the wrath and heard the familiar cry, My horse, my bridle and saddle, my horse, my bridle and saddle, Gilish! He'd been spotted. All eyes turned on him and every breath was held. Then there was an outbreak of chatter among the Shehogs of what a trick he had played and how he would never get the better of them again and how funny it was that there was a herb growing at his own home that, if boiled and drunk, would bring back her speech. <laughs> how funny it was that there was a herb growing at his own home that, if boiled and drunk, would bring back her speech. <gasps> Gilish rushed home and searched everywhere for a plant he didn't know. And then, by his own front door, he found a tiny herb growing. He'd never seen anything like it before. It had seven branches, and on each branch were seven tiny leaves. Was that the one? What do you think? Well, Gilish carefully cut and boiled the herb in some water on the fire. He tried some of the brew, and it was smooth and sweet and made him very sleepy. He took it to Isabel and implored her to try some, saying that he tried it himself. It was harmless and it might bring her speech back. He sought trust in her face and found it. She took a deep breath, drank all the liquid, laid down her head and slept for many, many hours. And when she woke up, she looked wide eyed and renewed. Her Gulish was still by her side. Oh. J'ai bien dormi, in modern French. Oh, j'ai très bien dormi. 
Isabel had got her speech back. Well, Galish and Isabel stayed together and they had a good and happy life. And some people even say that one of those letters actually did reach her father in France and he was glad that she had found happiness. But you know, Galish and Isabel also made an important discovery while Isabel couldn't speak. And that is that although words are wonderful, there are many, many other ways that we communicate. And you know, they say that a look can say a thousand words <laughs> and a gesture or a touch can mean so very much sometimes. So see if you can guess what I'm about to say with my face and actions. Thank you and goodbye. See you soon. <laughs>